My first uh, Rhodes, I, I bought it uh, at Manny's Music in New York, and uh, I think it had a silver, like it was one of those rounded silver tops, which were incredible. And uh, yeah, I remember we got a really good deal. I think it, it might have been four ninety five actually. Now that I think about it, which at the time, I mean, it was probably equivalent to like like four or five grand now. I guess back in that would have been uh, you know sixty nineteen sixty eight something like sixty seven sixty eight, and uh, yeah, it's just that that thrill of getting a new instrument that you love and. You know, you, you've you sort of, uh, I mean, for years I wanted one, and then I finally got the money together to buy it, and um, it was uh, it was definitely something that, <laughs> that that was a highlight of my life at, at that time, I'd say. David Frank, who's the keyboard player that was in the group The System, that sort of invented the whole idea of, like, 30-second note synthesizer bass parts and drum parts and he was he was the guy that the first guy that that really used a sequencer and drum machine to make it do stuff that no human being could or or would ever play and he actually lived right around here in the Pacific Palisades I went over to his house one day and he had a Wurlitzer and I sat down and played it and it was like whoa this is this is great I'm like missing out because I had sort of already migrated into DX7 and all this other stuff, and I, you know, I wasn't playing Rhodes anymore. And then it was like it was a big revelation to me that you know this is where it's at. I got to go back to the real instruments, to the real Rhodes, the real Wurlitzer, the real Mini Moog. And uh, you know, to this day, even though I, I do use you know a lot of um, synthesized um, elements, I I really loved this. You know, pretty much almost all the Rhodes stuff that I ever put on any arrangement is the real thing. I mean, it's just such an incredible sound. And it's sort of like it's something somewhere between a, a celeste and a and a vibes and a piano, and it's just something unique. And it's got a very interesting. Um, it, 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 it's, it's got just such an interesting uh, spectrum of the frequencies that come out of it, you know. And then this one in particular, it's got... If you listen to, like, the high, the high edge of the sound, it's, it's kind of, it's sort of unpleasant if you really analyze it. Because it's sort of noisy and it's a little, there's something about the harmonics that come off of it that aren't, you know, it's not like a string harmonic. It's, some, it's like... It's like a gamelan or something. It's like some kind of odd harmonic spectrum, but it's cool. It, it's it's unique and it and it just and it, and and depending on how loud you hit it, um, it has a totally different character. And you know, obviously, it made its presence felt in popular music. I mean, you know, all over the place. It's it's just become. It's almost become, I guess, more common to hear uh, the sound of a Rhodes in, in a typical pop arrangement than, than even a piano, I guess, I think, e even to this day. Thank you. 